finally time to use my overkill BMS that I've had sitting on the shelf for quite a while now. So I am going to be building out a workshop battery. These cells are some that I bought to test and they, uh, we, I made a video about it previously, but they did not pull capacity. So they were meant to be 200 amp hour cells and they got something like 280 or, or sorry 180 or somewhere around there basically just short so they're probably grade b cells um, that have been uh, repackaged and sold as grade a but obviously they are not grade a so i'm going to be putting them into this case over here which is our stock standard plastic case that we use for all of our ops batteries uh, and i'm going to be putting in a couple of extra things so a little cigarette lighter if it opens uh, which I can use for angle fridge and things like that if we ever go car camping and a set of USBs that I'll put on the top uh, and I'm going to wire it all in using the overkill BMS and basically do it as a test to test out the BMS overkill BMS see how I like it we've tested a few different BMSs on the channel here which we have used in various uh, ways and, and in different applications so this is going to be the test of the overkill just to see how we like it and what we think of it okay so the battery has been uh, top balanced all of the cells so we're going to take everything apart now and uh, start to get the bms onto the cells and get it all connected up i then need to cut the holes that i need for these into the case lid and do all of that stuff then we'll drop it in connect everything up and we should be good to go. So we're gonna get after that now. So the one thing about the um, <clears throat> Overkill BMS is it comes with these very long um, balance leads, which I actually quite like, because it means that uh, you can use them in quite a few different applications and situations, which is quite handy in my opinion. Sometimes these wire strippers can be a bit of a pain though. Um, but I, I'm not going to cut these uh, wires down the balance leads any more than uh, they are because I don't know long term what I'm going to use this BMS for so rather than cutting the balance leads down and then having to extend them in the future I am just going to use them as is and uh, just to tidy, tidy them up inside the battery once it's all put together. There'll be quite a bit of space in this case because we uh, usually use 280 or 300 amp hour cells in this case with a BMS. So um, this BMS is obviously quite a bit more compact <coughs> than what we usually use, which is the DALI 150 amp BMS. And so this one will be quite compact compared to that. And so I'm pretty confident that we'll fit everything in perfectly. And then again, I've mentioned it in previous videos, but it's very important to make sure that you use the correct size lug for the size of wire that you are working with to make sure you get a good connection on it. So I believe that the Overkill BMS originally was intended for use in medical grade battery systems, which is pretty cool. Uh, it means that you get a very good, well-built, reliable product, and uh, I'm led to believe that the quality assurance on it is very good. Um, so that'll be quite a nice change from some of the other manufacturers. Uh, DALI, for example, though we are strong advocates for DALI products, um, they are sometimes gaps in terms of their quality assurance and support etc etc um, but as you can see here with the overkill bms that i went for i went for the one where you have to build your own uh, wires for it so you get it with a couple of m6 bolts on either side so going to the battery and then to your bus bar or terminals and uh, you have to make up the wires for that then as I mentioned, the balance leads are much longer on this than on other BMSs that I've seen, uh, which is quite handy. You can build it out and it gives you a bit more flexibility in terms of customization. And I'm also led to believe that this BMS has two temperature probes, which is quite cool and handy for redundancy and things like that. Uh, so yeah, it also has Bluetooth straight out of the box. It comes plugged in, uh, ready to go. Um, so that's quite handy. Sometimes depending on who you buy your 
BMS from if you buy like a Dali, for example, sometimes you have to buy the BMS module separate. So it's quite handy to have that straight out of the box. Uh, you do have to buy the app for the Overkill BMS. Though. All right, so here is what we look like. So I landed up going for these grub screws instead of the tiny little six mm uh, bolts that came with the battery cells, mainly because uh, of these two terminals, or these two lugs here rather, um, and putting the third one on for the balance lead just didn't work, so didn't have any shorter grub screws, could have gone, I think these are 40 mil, it could have done easily with 30, probably 25 would have been fine, but this is all I had, so um, that's what I've gone with. I did check to make sure that they cleared the top of the case, which they do just, they'd probably find this is just on the top of that case, uh, which is fine. Um, have the balance leads running there, the positive here will sit along the balance leads there so that it's not rubbing on them and putting pressure on. These are the only ones that I'm not 100% sure on, they might put a bit of pressure on the balance leads there. Did consider putting them underneath here but it's quite fiddly to get to that to um, close it up so we'll see about that. And then like I said before, just keeping the balance leads in there in case I ever want to use the BMS for something else so that I don't have to extend them. Just cable tied it so they're neatly out of the way. Bluetooth sensor is here, all the balance leads are on. Everything is torqued to five Newton meters, um, which I think is probably about the max that we would get on these terminals, uh, just because they're the conventional aluminium terminals with a threaded hole. And then I put the positive for these two things in the case. Um, so those are just connected in series. They have a little fuse holder here, so that if we ever blow anything or if there's a short or something, obviously that fuse will protect things. The negative from these things goes to the terminal there on the underside, uh, so that it's all wired through the BMS, obviously, to predict protect the cells. So we're going to close that up and uh, check everything out. Bluetooth is working. I've been on the app just to double check but I'll take you guys through that now. Getting these cases closed can be a little bit tricky sometimes and that's mainly because we're trying to put a lot of stuff into a fairly small case uh, but that was intentional we wanted a smaller case as we could get away with when we were building out the ops range of batteries uh, so that we had a true sort of drop and replacement size battery by the end of it so the easiest way that I found is once you've laid everything and positioned everything in a way that is uh, that will work and, and that you won't have cables that will rub on each other or anything like that I use a couple of clamps just to hold things uh, together and then I tape it up using electrical tape like this. And that's how we did the prototypes for the Ops batteries. Have it, the battery is finished. Pretty pleased with how it's turned out. It's pretty light obviously with it just being uh, the smaller cells. So with them not being 280 amp hour cells, a little bit more space, less weight, etc. Uh, but I'm going to take you through the app now quickly and set it up. So I've opened the app and played with it a little bit but I have yet to actually configure it and change it and stuff like that. So for the um, iPhone, this is the app that they recommend. I'll try and get it up here on the screen. Hopefully you can see that. It's that icon over there, uh, just behind my finger. And so when you tap that, uh, you go in and you can see the battery. It gives you a demo device. I've renamed the battery already to Nigel's Workshop Battery. So when we open that, it'll load up here and give me some stats. So uh, it's currently saying 0%, 13.3 volts, which is the same as what this voltmeter on the top here says. The delta is 0 0.004 volts. Um, so pretty pleased with the delta there. Obviously they just, the cells are just resting. Um, I don't know that this is actually balancing now. I'm not sure if this is an active balance or not. I'd have to check on that or whether it's a passive balancer and what that means in case you don't know is that if it's an active balancer it'll uh, balance all the time even if the cells are just resting if, it, if it's sitting there it'll be balancing and keeping the cells the same sort of voltage if it's a passive balancer then generally that means it'll only balance when uh, the cells are being charged or discharged but more often than not it's only balancing when they're being charged if it's a passive balancer. So if we go to the config tab, this is where I change the name of the battery. And there are some other settings here which we'll run through as well. So BMS settings, number of cells, let's see, four. Uh, total battery capacity. Uh, so what is this? One, eighty, probably. Total cycle capacity, not sure. Cell full voltage, three, 
six five millivolts um, or milliamp hours. So minimum voltage, this is going to be two hundred and fifty millivolts. We'll have to just check that. So self discharge rate, I'm not sure. And then you get some other stuff here, 80% capacity, etc. Start voltage, delta to balance. So this is the balancer configuration, start voltage, um, balancer enabled, balance only when charging. So that maybe is where you can set that. Function switch, BMS name, pin protection. So you can obviously protect it in case you don't want other people to change stuff. Protections trigger value for over voltage, under voltage, etc. So let's see what happens if we save the configuration on this tab here. So Nigel's workshop battery. Yes. Okay, so current enable BMS calibration function. Um, so I'm not going to do anything there. There's a note saying only use if you know what you're doing. I don't know what I'm doing currently with this BMS, so we will leave that. Voltage calibration, um, we'll leave that as well. And notifications, do we? Yeah, I guess you could get notifications. I'm going to say don't allow just because I don't need notifications right now. All right, and then if we go back here. So, has this, it hasn't changed. Open configuration. Oh, didn't save. That's interesting. And value check for cycle count failed. Reason value is less than or equal to zero. Okay. Um, Right, well, I am gonna to have to play with that. Um, what I can say just from first impressions of the um, Overkill BMS, the actual BMS itself seems great. I like the fact that it's a bit more customizable in the sense that you can uh, make your own cables up for the terminals on the BMS. Uh, I also like that they give you really long balance leads, which is super helpful. Uh, depending on what your application is and what battery you're building out and ha having the ability of having your cells away from your BMS and stuff like that is pretty handy uh, in my opinion. So overall the sort of hardware of the product I really like. Uh, it would certainly appear that the app itself is very much like the DALI app which feels very clunky and not quite finished and not polished. Uh, maybe that's just the iPhone app. Maybe they've, I've seen that the Android app is a little bit different from what I've seen. Um, and so maybe the Android app is better and more functionally rich and less clunky. But the, so far from what I've seen, just playing with it now, just first impressions, never having opened the app before, uh, it is not intuitive. And I'm figuring my way around it and I'm like, yeah, I actually, 
at this point in time, the Daily app feels more intuitive and more natural than the Overkill app. Uh, so we'll see whether I get more used to it and, and what I think of that in the future. And of course, I will update you guys um, as we go. But if you want a really good app, then the 123 Electric app is probably the best out of them that I've used um, so far. But yeah, this one uh, has a lot to be d desired in terms of the app. So we'll see how the actual BMS performs, what we think of it, and how we like it as we use it over the coming weeks. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.